In this video, I'm going to share with you the top skills in Photoshop for e-learning. So I've been an instructional designer, mostly focusing on e-learning for the last 17 years at the time that I'm recording this video. And uh, while I've never received any formal Photoshop training, I've obviously had to use Photoshop over the years. For example, you know, having to crop and, and edit different photos before I incorporate them, either in e-learning or other instructional design work that I've done. So I decided to put together this video showing you sort of the top half a dozen or so. I think it works out to be one, two, three, five, six, seven, seven skills that I use all the time in e-learning design and development. Let's get started. Okay, one of the first things I'm going to show you today that I frequently do when designing and developing e-learning is cropping a photo. So let's start with um, downloading one of these images that I've previously licensed. We'll save that to my downloads folder and I'll just set this to open when it finishes downloading and it should open right away in Photoshop. So in this example, let's say I'm designing an e-learning course and I want this woman to be on the right hand side of my slide. Now, of course, my e-learning slide in this case happens to be 1024 by 627. So I'm going to use the crop tool, which you can see right here. And I'm just going to type in those values up above so I can make sure that the aspect ratio matches the slide that I intend to create. So there it is there. Now it's still obviously too wide. So I'm going to select one of the selection handles in the bottom right here and resize it to be about there, you know, and I might reposition it a little bit here. I might even cut off, you know, her shoulder a little bit. No, I think that works. Like I could bring it in closer, giving me more room for text here. One of the concerns that you might have is the actual resolutions, even at this crop size. If you take a look right next to my cursor there, we're still 3,930 pixels by 2,407 pixels. So if I chose this, click on the check mark and it crops to that size there. So we need to actually resize it. You can do that on the export. So I can go to export and export as and in this case here, I can just override the image size with the size that I'm looking for. And you can see it's already perfectly sized there. And then I can press export. Alternatively, if I want to make sure that it's sized, if I'm going to save it in this Photoshop format, um, you know, I can go into image and image size, change the width and height from centimeters to pixels. And I can just type in the values that I wish to use here and press OK. So that when I do go to export this image, once it's finished here, I'll already have the size of 1024 by 627. So before we export that, we may decide to lower the quality. If it's going to be a background image, maybe it's a blurred background. It doesn't need to be super high quality. But I found that just choosing a medium quality will reduce the file size, which might be beneficial when you're developing e-learning. Certainly it'll keep your e-learning project file size down. So I can go ahead and export this to my desktop there. So not only have we cropped, we've also resized an image. I've reverted this image back to the original image that I downloaded from Adobe Stock. And uh, another task that you would need to complete as an e-learning designer developer is to remove the background. Now this one's going to be relatively easy because the background is this pink color and it's very easy to isolate. But the process is the same regardless. So I'm going to start with this image here. And what we're going to do is select and mask from the select drop down menu. And, uh, you know, I've set my view up to automatically have this red overlay, which really helps to make it clear what's been selected here. Now, in the past, this was a very manual process 
where you had to use the various different uh, tools here, the quick selection tool, the refine edge brush tool. And you may still have to use that, but there's this convenient select subject button right here. If we press that, it should do a fairly good job of isolating this person from the background here. We of course can zoom in, let's say to 100% and just double check the edges and so forth. This is pretty good. Um, you know, it looks to me like we're almost there. There's a few things that you might want to uh, include, like the ear was a little bit off there. So I can use the select, the quick selection tool and around the edges, if there's, you know, some stray hairs, you can just kind of use the uh, edge detection tool a little bit here. Looks like we have to fix this ear as well. Sometimes just uh, tapping on it with that will make it relatively easy to select there. That looks almost good. And I'll show you a way you can work on this after the fact as well. Um, this looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now what happens is this mask is a combination of uh, white and black. So if there's something missing, for example, rather than going in and working further with the selected mask tool, you can actually just select the color white, use your paintbrush, and just paint the part of the image back in that you wish to keep. You know, how accurate this needs to be really depends on the image itself, but as you can see here, it's pretty easy to go ahead and just sort of paint that back in and you can uh, just double check a few areas here. This looks pretty good to me. I like to zoom in close up. Let's take a, a nice aerial shot here. Now, the thing to remember is that if you're going to export this image, a couple things that I would probably do as well, just select what we need here. We don't need the full image if obviously we're getting rid of the background here. And we can select crop from the image dropdown and file, export, and you can do the quick export as a PNG, which I think is appropriate, but you can also, of course, use export as, and of course, make better choices here. So obviously with the background uh, transparent, you're going to need to maintain PNG. And of course, we can choose a size that's appropriate for our e-learning here. So maybe 600 by 900 would be a good size. And we can go ahead and export that to our desktop to be imported into our e-learning project. Now, I have a separate video on this topic, but I maintain this Captivate2019.psd file, which is a photos, Photoshop project file. And it contains all the different layers that I might need to make a thumbnail like you see here. And what's great about this is that I can grab any element within this and, you know, line it up uh, independently. In the case of text, I can go in and just type in new text. And, you know, I, I very quickly can create um, you know, this new thumbnail. I have a variety of different photos of myself that I can select and choose, uh, you know, different images, whatever is appropriate for the video in question. And all of these, I use that uh, transparent background feature to add these images of myself. Along the left-hand edge, I've got layers that represent different colors that I might wish to use for different circumstances. And I've collected a variety of different icons that represent, you know, what that particular topic is about. Mostly it's Adobe Captivate, obviously, but, you know, today, for example, I'm going to be talking about Photoshop skills. So I might use this combination of the image and so on. And then, of course, I can simply export this as and again it's already sized appropriately for the thumbnails on youtube 1920 by 1080 is perfect um, and i usually keep the quality high on that 
But there's an example of how you can have multiple layers, make a few small changes and come up with an entirely new looking uh, image. And this is great too, if you don't wanna use the text in Adobe Captivate. So this combination of elements would be very difficult to reproduce and captivate. So do it all in Photoshop and then import it as a single file. Now, another thing we sometimes do is simulate a particular piece of software on a laptop, such as this image here. So I'm gonna go ahead and license this from the free collection at Adobe Stock. We'll download this. And as soon as it downloads, we'll open it in Photoshop. And let's actually just use this as an example. So I'll call this the top skills in Photoshop for e-learning. Oh, I was hoping that would stay for one line, <laughs> but we might as well just slide right into another skill that I use frequently. And that's of course the resizing of text. So I might reduce the size there. You can also reduce the space between lines of text. And once you're happy with that, you of course can use the move tool to simply find the best spot to put that particular image there or that particular text. Actually, I think it should be a little bit smaller. So let's reduce that a little bit here. There, I think that's better. And we'll click OK. And again, I'll use the Move tool to find really the best spot for that particular image there. So let's say, for example, I wanted to simulate someone using Photoshop, just as I am here. I'm going to use uh, my tool to do a screen capture of that. A screen capture. And I'm going to save this image to my desktop. And now we can go to the Adobe stock image here. And uh, once I've got that captured or opened up in Photoshop, I can copy that, go over to my stock image here and paste that in. And then I can click on edit, transform, and choose distort and literally grab these selection handles and move them to the corners of the screen to create a simulation of what this would look like if I was literally, or in this case, the woman was literally working on the very same file in Photoshop that I was. And of course we can zoom in a little bit here and maybe get a little closer just to make sure we're as accurate as we possibly can be here. So we have to just engage that distort effect again. And we'll just play with those settings a little bit here. I think that looks pretty good. There we go. Click our check mark. And now we have an image of this woman working on Photoshop as if she was working on one of my thumbnails for YouTube. So there's actually a couple of features in one, the ability to uh, edit text, of course, and play with text and work with the spacing, the kerning and the, uh, the space between lines, but also how you could distort an image to make it appear as if it's on someone else's computer screen. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.